Smartphones are convenient, but for kids, the technology and certainly the social media aspect can be too much too soon. Hatfield is beginning a new program. It's called Wait Till 8th. I sat down with John Robert, the superintendent of schools, to learn more. The program's called Wait Until 8th. Um, last fall, we had a community event in Hatfield where we um, showed the film Screenagers, which is a documentary about the amount of time young people spend um, on screen time. Not necessarily on smartphones, but all, certainly on smartphones, but also just in general in front of screens and the, um, the dangers of that, the concerns related around the amount of time, screen time that young children, particularly young children, spend. Um, and that was a pretty uh, well-received event in the community. Uh, shortly after that, I was approached by the uh, school council at the elementary school, made up of parents and teachers, um, who would like us to, you know, what are the next steps? We have this information, but how do we empower parents? And one of the things that came out of the discussion is the fact that schools cannot do this alone. Uh, we only see the students for a short period of time, I mean, relatively speaking. So um, we really need a partnership with the parents. So um, they approached us with a program called Wait Until Eighth. And what it basically is is asking parents to take the pledge to wait until their children are at least in eighth grade to get them a smartphone. Okay, does that also mean not handing your kid a phone while you're waiting in line at a restaurant or, or somewhere else? Because that's, you know, another issue that I think a lot of parents face. Is that something a little bit different? Or are you just talking about actually buying the phone for the kids? Well, I, initially, I, I think we're really talking about really buying the phone for the, for the kids, mm -hmm. but also looking at unsupervised screen time. The amount of pressure that is on parents to buy their children what are basically mini computers right. with uh, oftentimes unfettered access to the entire world um, at such a young age. Uh, we've been successful at our elementary school that we do not allow children to have smartphones up till sixth grade. Uh, Smith Academy is a seventh through twelfth grade building. And uh, what we find is that once children enter seventh grade, it's almost a rite of passage in many ways to get that smartphone. Um, they're not ready for that. Their brains are still developing. Um, there are things that they're exposed to uh, that uh, are not things that children should be exposed to. What are you talking about specifically? When, when you talk about having that cell phone in their hand, obviously there's all these different social media platforms where they could be exposed to things that are adult content. Absolutely, violent content, adult content, uh, and oftentimes these are being interpreted by a, um, a mind that has not yet matured enough to understand exactly what they're saying. And one of the important messages that we are trying to tell parents is that it's not necessary to have the smartphone to come to school. We have technology that we can provide children that is, it's, it's monitored technology. The, the feeling in our community is that we want children to be children as long as they can be children. There's also a lot of studies that have shown that uh, increases in anxiety, increases in depression, um, are all tied into the amount of time children spend in, in front of screens. And let's talk about that a little bit because a lot of those um, studies that have been done, there was a, one done by a, a professor at San Diego State, talked about increased depression, increased anxiety, increased thoughts of, of suicide. But a lot of what is, is put into that are some of the social media platforms. So, you know, you have a sixth grader who puts up a picture of him at a hockey game or whatever, and then you're immediately looking at how many likes. And, and some of those, you know, likes or, or not having the likes really feeds into self-esteem issues. I have to imagine you must be seeing that not only at middle school, but definitely at the high school level mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, the, the pressures to, to uh, conform to certain um, standards that are placed on uh, through whether it's... Um, the body image or, or uh, through popularity. Well, one of the biggest things that we've run up against with, with uh, the use of technologies, particularly uh, with, with children having smartphones early, is also the social uh, bullying that may occur. Um, years ago, children would come to school, and if there was any bullying that happened, it may happen, say, at recess or at the lunchroom or in the hallways, but children could leave school and they could go to a safe environment, a different environment. 
Now, they the potential do. is 24 seven. And the amount of time that children will spend online, whether it's gaming or whether it's just texting or uh, just interacting, it, it's, it never gets, a, there's never a break from that social interaction. And I think the other problem with that as well, when you're talking about bullying or just you know, comments, you know, mm -hmm. coming from kids who are chirping, something that's not so nice, is that sometimes if kids aren't comfortable telling a trusted adult that this is happening, you know, it's right in front of their right. face and they're rereading it and maybe they're responding or, or whatever it is and now they're living with that. The other problem I'm wondering if you see as well is kids feeling left out. Everybody's at a party and they just put it up. But, yes, yeah, or yeah. they're Snapchatting from that party and you're not there. Yeah. I think that's another um, issue that obviously would be leading to no. depression and anxiety as well. A absolutely. Um, it it's opens up an entire... Um, network of interaction that the children may not be, may not be, and, and that's one of the, the, I think some of the pressures that parents feel when th they don't get their child the cell phone. Everybody else has one, everybody else is doing this, and they feel that their child is being left out. Um, so it's, it's, it's a complicated issue, quite honestly. What about as far as security? Because I know that um, one issue that I've talked to parents about, and I've, I've thought about this often, is that, you know, if the kids have a phone, you can get to them directly. Not that they're supposed to be texting in class, but God forbid there was an emergency, you're able to reach them immediately. But then when you add the elements that you're talking about with social media and just being able to access all of these different things in one place, it, it kind of is, it's like, which one is more important? Right, but you can get your child a phone. You can get your child a track phone, a phone if you need to contact them. I mean, we make it clear to parents that uh, we have phones available. If a child needs to contact you, we need to contact them. There's ways to do that. Um, but a smartphone is more than a telephone. And I think that's, that's where parents, if you're getting your child a smartphone for the sole purpose of being able to communicate with them, it's going to do a lot more than that. There's other ways to, to make sure they're safe. The other thing I would say is if there is an event in school, uh, it's really not necessary to have 100 students texting their parents. That could actually be counterproductive uh, right. to trying to resolve whatever the issue is, especially when uh, children may not have all the facts uh, of what is actually happening. It could even cause panic. It could. It's not the best solution to a situation like that. Uh, and that is the one thing that parents will say to me is that I want my child to have a phone in case something happens. So there are ways to, to address that without giving a 7th or an 8th grader a smartphone, which is basically, as I said, it's a mini computer that is unmonitored. And has I this affected how kids interact with adults and with each other? It, it, it certainly has. Um, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, you'd go into a lunchroom and you'd most likely you'd see students engaged with each other. Now if you go into a high school, any high school lunchroom, um, you'll see more students looking down at a mm -hmm. cell phone looking at, and, and not interacting with, and, and it does impact, they're not working on these, the, the, the interpersonal skills that they're going to need when they get older. And when they, and, and that's, uh, it's, an, it's a missed opportunity these times to really start to interact with each other. Um, and I have seen a correlation between students that have behavioral issues or have self-esteem issues and the amount of time that they spend uh, on a cell phone. I have seen that. As opposed to kids that play or that participate in sports or participate in, in uh, the local musical, the, the activities that do not in spend a uh, tremendous amount of time. The other issue that we have come up against is uh, children that have been permitted uh, and parents may not even know this is happening, uh, to uh, be on their phones late at night. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of tired young students that will come to school, and when you kind of investigate, you know, why, why are you so tired? You find out lots of times they're up on their phones until, you know, until they basically fall asleep.